joining us right now, and we are certainly happy to have him for the first time. I know it's not Studio B for Tanner Mangum, <laughs> but the BYU quarterback with us on remote at Deseret First Credit Union. Tanner, welcome to the show. Thank you. Thanks for having me. We haven't had you on amazingly, but Tanner Mangum's here. Let's give it yeah! up for Tanner Mangum. Woo! We got a crowd here. Yeah, all the muffs. He can't hear the clap. Because of the <laughs> Everyone's got gloves on. The brave on. ones. We're braving the cold. <laughs> okay, are you colder right now, or was it colder on Saturday in Logan? Definitely colder on, on Saturday. That was uh, probably the coldest game I've ever been a part of. But at the same time, it was fun. So, you know, I, it, was, it was worth it. How do you grip the ball in that kind of weather? Luckily, we have head warmers. Okay. And then there's a lot of, you know, blowing the hands, just you know, try to keep them warm. The hardest part was on the sideline. In which part of the field, it's not too bad. But luckily, we had some heaters on the sidelines. So we were all kind of huddled around those and tried to stay warm. You're showing us up right now, by the way. We're, we're in beanies, <laughs> and we have gloves and everything. And, uh, you remind me of the O linemen who come out, and oh. they have no sleeves. Those guys, <laughs> Those are, guys are nuts, right? <laughs> Those guys are nuts. When I went outside to start warming up, you know, I was in long sleeves, double layer tights, and they come out with just cutoffs. And I was just like, wow, I'm glad I have them in front of me. Do the tights <laughs> make a difference? Yeah, they do, for sure. Okay, so, yeah. I mean, it's not just for show. It's not like, hey, I look good in these tights. <laughs> no, it definitely helps. It helps to stay warm. There's not a lot of style uh, points coming it, out of Logan it, in general, I mean, right? It looks good, but then it also feels good. So. Okay. There you go. Hey, double bonus. <laughs> Kill two birds with one stone. Tanner Mangum with us. Uh, how's your hamstring, by the way, in the cold? It's it's getting better. I mean, it, you know, it's still not 100%, and it's hard to get 100% during a season just because you're constantly going. But uh, you know the training staff's helping me out a lot, and I can't complain. But it'll be good to have a couple weeks off before the bowl game, and hopefully get it back to 100 percent. Did that force you to change your game in a way where you had to stay in the pocket more? Because your first play against Nebraska was a nine-yard scramble. <laughs> I mean, a little bit, but it's not too much of a change that needs to be made. I mean, I'm not going to use that as an excuse or anything. I just, you know, I'm not a, you know, a, a, a huge runner, so it, it doesn't necessarily hold me back that much. More than anything, it's just um, mentally, you know, the first time against uh, Cincinnati, I, the game after I pulled the hamstring, the first half I was a little bit hesitant playing with the pulled hammy, but then at uh, halftime I realized, you know, I, I don't need to worry about it. I don't need to let it affect me. And so I just went out and, and played, not, with th not thinking about it, and I played a lot better. So from that on, it hasn't bothered me at all, really. You were still on your mission when we pulled this stunt, but I said that I could run a sub five second 40 yard dash. <laughs> Okay, as a three-year-old man. Okay, <laughs> you, thank you, thank you. So we ran, he ran it. I was timed unofficially by Jerem Jordan at five one six. We did, Close. we did official timing. Okay. I'm still training. I'm still training. training. I'm training again. I'm going to do okay. this at BYU's pro day in April. Good. I'm going to do it too. Okay, can you run a sub five forty? Yeah. Hopefully, I think we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe with a with a healthy hammy. <laughs> yeah, okay. with a healthy. Yeah. Okay. Given that, wow, I almost slipped off the desk here. <laughs> Get, with a healthy, yeah. Let's not risk the hamstring with that. Kid. I'm yeah. not Let's, saying I'm, now. Yeah. Later. E okay. Off we'll season. be good. Yeah. yeah. What What was it like to finish the season nine and three after everything that happened and that with that schedule? No, it was it was awesome to finish the way we did in Logan. You know, rivalry game, taking the wagon wheel back to Provo. That was an awesome way to finish. Obviously. It wasn't perfect. Did you call the ambulance? We got the fire truck coming by. I don't know. Everything's okay. Tanner's okay. <laughs> Keep going. You know, it was, it was an amazing year. Obviously, it wasn't perfect. You know, the, those three losses were tough. You know, you never like to lose. But at the same time, you have to look at the positives. And you know, we did a lot of good things. And, and um, looking at a ton of different guys stepped up. Uh, you know, a lot of injuries happened, personnel shifts. But uh, as a group, we stayed together. It had some big wins, and to be able to finish nine and three is something that we're we're excited about because it puts us in a good position to get ten, and uh, you know ten wins is something that we want we want to get something that hasn't happened here at BYU for a while, so uh, something that that gets us pumped for the bowl. BYU quarterback Tanner Mangum with us on BYU Sports Nation. How would you sum up the entire season in one sentence? That's tough because it's been an amazing season. I mean, it's it's been a lot of fun. Uh, in one sentence, I would just say. We are a resilient bunch. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you look at all the wins we've had. I mean, I think apart from the Wagner game, we were losing at some point in, that, in the game. Every game. Every game. Every win. And a lot of those came in the fourth quarter. We, were, we came back in the fourth to win it. Um, we lost key guys to injuries. But we were able to stay together, stay strong, and, and just keep, keep fighting. And to be able to pull out those wins was, you know, was uh, something pretty special to be a part of. 
We're soon releasing uh, a bracket challenge of eight plays that we're calling the set what to determine the second best play of 2015. <laughs> <laughs> okay, first is obvious. Yes, it's the hail so mary. What, in your opinion, is the second best play of the season? <clears throat> I think it's either Tomasi's scoop and score okay. against Utah State before half. I mean, that was huge, and that was probably <laughs> the play of the game. Or I think another huge play was Kai's pick six against Boise State to seal the deal, kind of the nail in the coffin. You know, that was he looked like uh, a running back once he had the ball in his hands. He looked like a high school quarterback in Vegas. Yeah, he really did. Oh, wait. <laughs> wait, oh, wait a minute. Yeah. And then also Bronson's pick against UConn. And then the next play we scored, just that, that. To Mitch. Yeah, That's to Mitch. Exactly. Those two plays right there, it was a huge momentum shift right there. Overall, the defense. Any play the defense makes, play of the year. You got to give those guys some love, right? Oh, yeah. Honestly. I mean, I saw a Twitter question yesterday where it was like, which group has played better, the offense or the defense? And I think the defense by far, they, they kept us in games all year long. I mean, without them, we wouldn't have been able to have those crazy last second plays. You know, they, a lot of what they did goes overlooked because. You know, they made stops, turnovers, and what they did, you know, really saved our season. Tanner Mangum with us again on BYU Sports Nation, live remote from Deseret First Credit Union. What was the high point of the entire season? Was it the Hail Mary or was, or was it something off the field in the locker? What was the high point? Oh, uh, man, there's a lot of high points. I think, you know, a season's full of ups and downs. You know, we, we definitely had highs after Nebraska and after Boise State. But then we had some, some low points, you know, losing two straight to UCLA and Michigan. Oh, no, no. I, that's right. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It was a long season. It's been, it's <laughs> been a while, the games, man. Losing track. Um, but I think a, a big high point probably was, um, uh, I'd say Saturday, honestly, to be able to, to finish with a win against Utah State. It was a, a big game for us. It was kind of a, uh, a statement game for us. We needed to come out and, and play well and and to give us that momentum going into the bowl. So that got us win number nine, which is, you know, something that we, we needed to get to be able to get win number 10. I mean, we kind of just take it week by week. It's hard to, you know, look too far ahead. But to be able to finish the regular season nine and three with a, with a big win against Utah State, a good team, and now, you know, take it, that took us into the bowl, bowl prep. So I think right now we're, we're kind of on that high looking to, to play our best football in the bowl. Let's talk about the halftime of Fresno State. <laughs> so what happened? I figured we, you might talk we, about this. <laughs> <laughs> We've heard stories, but what's, what's the story? So th the true story, I mean, we, we ran a play, and I looked at the clock, and it ran down to zero. So naturally, I took off to the, to the locker room. Did you have to I, use the restroom, or you no, just I, normally? No, so I, I w the reason why my pants were undone when I was coming out <laughs> is because my pants were down because I was getting wrapped. <laughs> my leg, my hamstring. Yeah. That was so funny, man. I know. <laughs> it really was a, a funny moment. I'm <laughs> Sometimes I still look at the footage and it just makes me laugh. But, yeah, I was getting my, my hamstring wrapped by the trainers, and then one of the equipment guys said, hey, they, they put two more seconds on the clock. you got to get like, back out like there. Like ran into the locker? Yeah. So I, I was, you know, just hurried, pulled my pants up, <laughs> ran back out in the field for the last play. Oh, uh, one, you, of the, one of the you, highlights of the season. Did you know everyone was waiting for you? Like the whole stadium? Because when you emerged from the Where's tunnel. Where's the quarterback? When you emerged from the tunnel, it was like Willis Reed in <laughs> Madison Square Garden. It was like Paul Pierce in the finals. I know. I hear the crowd uh, cheer a little <laughs> bit. And then, you know, all my teammates were giving me a hard time and laughing at me. It was it was fun. I was just trying to laugh, you know, laugh it off and <laughs> enjoy the moment. Well, they needed you because we heard that, that Bo Hodge couldn't find his helmet. <laughs> and it was a fourth down, right? You needed to run a play to... Yeah, get all the time exactly, off just, to, just to run the clock off. Yeah. Do you have a nickname <laughs> yet? Has your, have your teammates given you a nickname? Uh, a lot of different guys call me different things. Um, there's not just one. I mean, Mitch Matthews, you know, he, he speaks Spanish, too, because he, he's, he's one of a Spanish-speaking mission. And Yapo, man. Yeah, Yapo. And uh, whenever he sees me, he, he, wherever I am, he says, Mangum. Because in Spanish, you say Mangum. You don't, see, you don't okay. say Mangum, you say yeah, Mangum. yeah. yeah. So whenever he sees me, he says Mangum. A lot of people call me T Mang, T Mangy, um, Tyler, <laughs> Tyler, Mangum. Trevor, Taylor, <laughs> <laughs> Connor. Yeah, yeah. T Mang is good. That's like a DJ name. DJ yeah. T Mang, rocking T, -Mang. T Swift. Yeah. <laughs> rocking T know. Swift. Yeah. <laughs> hey, defend I, Taylor Swift right now. I like Taylor Swift too, but no one rocks T Swift like a oh, DJ. Oh no, do you rock T Swift, Tanner? You know, I'm not afraid to admit I'm a big T Swift fan. Went to her concert few years back nice. and not not ashamed to admit it when did you feel like this was your team 
That's tough. I never really felt like it was just my team. I, I really honestly feel that it never has been just my team. Um, I think more than anything, it's the seniors team. And the seniors we have in this team, like Bronson, Mitch, um, you know, those guys, Riker, the guys who have been here, you know, for four or five years, honestly, it's their team. And I'm just, you know, happy to be to be part of it. Um, and obviously, Taysom, you know, when he went down, that, that was a tough blow. But the season has to go on. And, uh, you know, it was it was kind of a big transition going from where I was as a, you know, fresh return missionary back up to all of a sudden being the starter. But week by week, you know, the, the confidence grew. But that gr that came as a part of the uh, the senior leadership. You know, they led the way. They kept us together. Uh, they were kind of that, that glue that held us together throughout the year. So I wouldn't ever really say it was just my team. I was just, you know, doing my best to do my, my part each week to help the team win. But... Uh, that was made possible by by the seniors on this team. If yeah. if Taysom Hill decides to come back to BYU, what happens for you? I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about it that much. I haven't got that far. You know, during the season, you're more just worried about who you're playing that week. You know, um, so whatever happens, happens. You know, I haven't. I haven't uh, I'm not aware of any decisions that he's made yet. So once that time comes, then we'll then we'll decide what the plan is. Who do you want, or should I say, what do you want in a bowl game opponent as the final match of the year? I think just whatever the best matchup is, and you know, we want to play a good team. I've heard, um, I've heard USC, I've heard Washington State, I've heard um, Temple, Navy. I mean, I've heard a lot of different games. Um, but I just, I just think whatever team gives us the best matchup will is the one that we want. You know, whether that's Vegas or Hawaii. Uh, we're just excited to play again, you know, excited to get a chance at 10 wins, a chance at a bowl victory. Um, so for now, we, we get, it's kind of out of our hands, out of our control, but uh, we're excited to find out who it is so we can get going. Let's give them the karma a couple weeks early yes. before yes. the, yes. Can we, before the can bowl Can we game. give you a portion of the BYU Sports Nation karma? Channel? I know about the karma. I've heard of it. I've seen it happen. So <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. There have been several instances this year <laughs> where it has manifested itself <laughs> on the field of play. Well, cool. Can't doubt I, it. I dare, I dare prophesy a uh, rushing touchdown in the bowl game. <laughs> That's what I'm Whoa. feeling from the karma right now. Whoa. Are you okay with that? Hey, whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> I can't really plan things. That's, that's a, a lot of football is just improvisation. You kind of have to just be ready to go and make a play. So if it happens, I'll do it. A la Max Hall against San Diego State. I remember that in game. In 09. I remember at that. At halftime. Had to get in like Tomasi. Yes. And he did. Hey, Brian Logan, I hope you're listening. Taylor Swift greater than Justin Bieber. Are you cool with me saying that? <sighs> I don't know. It, it kind of <laughs> are you a, are you a Bieber fan no. too? I don't want to. I don't want to hate on, on one or the other. You know. I don't want to. I'm a, I respect both. I got a lot of respect for both. Oh, Canada. Taylor Swift is better. <laughs> <laughs> he always gets the last word. I have to. That's what I do. Tanner, great to have you, man. Thanks. Thanks for having Thanks me. Thanks for coming on. Congratulations fun. on a great season. Thank you.